Well, hi, I'm Judy Miller, and I use the Nanaimo North branch of the Vancouver Island Regional Library. And I'm here to support strong libraries and strong communities. What was my favorite book as a child? Absolutely, I would say C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Um, I, I was just fascinated with the idea that uh, somehow there could be a piece of furniture in your house that you could slip through that into another world. That, that idea just blew me away. And uh, be in another world where it was snowing and there were talking animals and, and lions and all that sort of thing. So, so that book stayed with me from forever. I, I just think it's, it's fabulous. I wanted to look and see, well, where would be the place in my own house where I could slip into another world? But uh, uh, there wasn't one of those, but maybe libraries are kind of like that. Ah, what's a recent book that I read? Well, one that I was particularly interested in was is called Tweets from the Trenches. I don't know if you've heard of it, but uh, it's maybe really appropriate right now because we've just come into November. But uh, it's uh, stories, real life stories uh, from the First World War. And uh, the writer, Jacqueline Carmichael, who is a writer who lives on Vancouver Island, I think in Port Alberni, uh, she's fascinated with the First World War. And I think she's written a couple of books on it now. She may have a new one too, but uh, the, the one I read was Tweets from the Trenches. And it, uh, it's kind of a mixture of poetry and and historical documents and well they aren't really tweets they might be postcard messages or telegrams that real soldiers uh, or nurses have written home and so it, it's like hearing the voices of people real people from 1914 to 1918 and some of the horrors they went through and some of the humor that it, it, it just brought it very much to life in a format that I I don't think has been done before, not such a, a melange of, of things. So I thought that was that was really quite a fascinating book. Uh, I, I, I'm reading quite a lot of history right now because I often, I, I write humor, but uh, I often look for historical books and then see if I can find humorous angles to them. So another one that I read recently was called It Ended Badly by Jennifer Wright, and that was about 13 of the worst breakups in history. And I ended up uh, writing about four of those for an online publication, History of Yesterday, that I write for on Medium. So, so yes, I've been exploring history books a lot lately. But Jacqueline Carmichael's books, I think the other one is called something about uh, Heard from the uh, Guns, uh, Mid Guns or something. But she's a writer, certainly uh, worth checking out, I think. What resources do I use from the library? Oh, I use all kinds of books. I, I uh, and audio books. I, I am a lover of audio books as well. Uh, so many of the digital resources. I love that the library has committed to going into all kinds of resources now, not just physical books, uh, because that's the only way you're going to capture the younger generation as well. Um, I've been downtown to check out Creativity Commons and, and some of, of these other uh, things that we have available to us now. So, so it's just great. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, I, for me as a writer, the staff are also an extraordinary resource and, and so willing to help you research things. And, and, and that, that's just been wonderful. I'm not sure even that the general public knows how useful these people are, Darby Love and Jonathan Bigelow. And all. We, we've got such talented people who are willing to take time to help you to learn how to do everything from use your iPad to, to whatever. So, so staff are also a resource to me anyway. How does my life story affect my relationship with books and the types of books that I'm drawn to? I, I think a lot of people would say, oh, you know, my mother read to me as a child and I always loved books and so on. 
in, in my home, they didn't particularly read uh, to us as kids. And uh, in fact, I had trouble learning to read. And uh, it came out in grade two that uh, here I was kind of faking it when I was called on to read. I, I actually didn't mean to be cheating, but I thought you were just supposed to memorize. And I was trying to repeat what I thought was in the text. And of course, at some point you have to turn the page and I didn't know where to go from there. So it came out that I really, Judy really couldn't read. Uh, and at that point, there was a... Um, little interview with the parents and the teacher and of course they were uh, advised to take me to the library and get me reading so I can still remember the first time I went to the it's been pulled down many years ago now but the Kitchener Public Library and going up the big steps and my fascination with the fact that all of this was available and you could take some of it home and and I couldn't believe it. I felt like I'd been given the keys to the world, and uh, I still kind of feel like that. But um, it, how did that affect what I read later? Well, I've just always been curious about every last thing. So I, I, it, it didn't lead me to one kind of books over another. Um, I write humor now because I found out that using words you can lighten the mood in situations and I used to try to do that in my family home but but the books on my coffee table will be all sorts of different kinds of books that I I draw on and uh, but like I say the library when I finally found out about it just seemed like the keys to the world to me and still does what does the library mean to me it's access to a world of information in whatever form that might be, audio, digital, uh, anything. It means connections to people and those writers uh, through their books and ideas. So it's the opportunity for growth for, for me, for everybody who uh, allows themselves to take advantage of this wonderful resource. Um, it means escapism sometimes. You just want to get away and into another world uh, in some ways, and the library is there for that. And physically, it's, it's, it's a safe place. It's an inclusive place. It's, it's, uh, for, for all kinds of people, it's kind of, uh, you know, there's, there's people from all, all corners of society and immigrants learning to speak English. I didn't mention before, and I should have in the resources, the, the programs that, that are available for people. I've taken programs in learning to, uh, well, I studied Spanish in university and I've tried to improve it a little bit and, and other people are there learning to improve their English or, or their programs for cognitively challenged people, all sorts of things going on. Now we've lost some of that obviously with COVID, which is so sad and we need to get it back. Uh, but certainly the library means all of that to, to me. How has the library supported me as a writer? Well, as a writer, I think I, maybe I touched on it a little bit before with the research uh, saying that they, the various resource, the librarians and specialists have been absolutely useful to me and I, I value that. People don't I every, always know that they can just pick up the phone and your own research assistant will, will help you. And they, they everybody has access to Google, but uh, librarians have specialized training and access to databases for which they pay a lot of money and we can't always afford that. So, so they're willing to do that for that. So certainly as a writer, I have appreciated that. I've appreciated it, as I said, as a safe place. I, and I'm a, North Branch is my branch now, although I've used the other ones as well and like them all. Uh, but I would take my laptop there and write. Libraries back in the day uh, didn't, uh, you know, like that or they wouldn't let you have a coffee there or the librarian would be shushing you or something. Those kind of, these are kind of gone, you know. Uh, a library is a community place. And so I would take my laptop there, many of my things, uh, my 
my pieces that I write for Reader's Digest or for online publications, I have written in the library. And uh, so that that's cool for me. I, I, writers are solitary people and getting out of the house and, and feeling like there are people around you, although you're not obliged to talk to them. I like that very much. Um, beyond that, the library's been a place in the sense of its, its rooms uh, where I've been able to present. So maybe giving something back when I wrote my first book, Beaver Bluff, The Librarian Stories, interestingly enough, um, back in 2012, I, I did book launches in, the ver in various branches of the libraries. And since then, I've done a number of workshops and lectures on humor writing. And most recently, I was doing, a, a, for the general public, not for writers necessarily, a legacy letter workshop, teaching people how to write legacy letters, uh, which might just be a, a letter for great grandchildren that they might never have the occasion to meet or a letter for a special occasion, a birth or a graduation, or, or maybe um, recollections about their, their past life, you know, how I met your grandpa and what it was like when we dated and that sort of thing, or about their joys and hopes and values. And I, I was presenting those at a, a number of seniors' homes and in a number of library branches. And I that was just at the beginning of COVID. And uh, I had hoped to do those on many more branches. And uh, praise God, if COVID is over soon, maybe we will. But uh, anyway, the fact that those rooms are there for people to come together and and learn and share and teach uh, is their libraries are precious places uh, because of that for me as as a writer and and as as a presenter I guess um, and and lastly maybe everybody doesn't think of it but I think of libraries I value them as a writer because they're places for free sharing of information. And that might mean even information that everybody doesn't agree with or books or that people think, oh, I don't agree with that. I don't know why the library has that copy of that or why they invited that particular speaker or whatever. But I think libraries, they've maybe taken some flack for that, but they have resisted that and been open and said, no, this has to be a place where people can share and explore and learn and make their own judgments on things. And as a writer, I totally endorse that and feel that that's an important contribution that libraries make to writers like me, but also to the community in general. <laughs>